Bonanza bust. That's right, folks. So tighten your belt and grease that pig because this is going to be one heck of a ride. Our first theater release this episode is Iron Man. Russell? Yes, Patrick. Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr., is this rich bachelor that sells weapons of mass destruction. But when out of this business endeavor, he soon finds that his weapons are being mass marketed to the enemies of America. These enemies now have a price out on his head after capturing him. And this price out for his head is put on his head by none other than a very close friend of his. We won't mention names. To escape from these enemies of the American territory, Stark must create a weapon to assist him in this escape. Stark finally breaks out after losing a fellow inmate to the battle of the year. Once Stark escapes, he soon begins to perfect this weapon and becomes our known Iron Man. Patrick, what do you think of this movie? Well, this was an interesting movie. The first thing I think we need to realize is this is Marvel's first attempt at making their own movie based on one of their comic book characters. Um, in the past, they've always lent their characters to other movie producers, and this time they decide to go on their own. I must tell you, they hit a home run. I was actually concerned about the casting of Robert Downey Jr., but you know, in the end, what I decided is it ended up that it was the perfect casting. Gwyneth Paltrow plays an excellent Pepper Potts and serves as a love interest for Downey Jr. I, I need to say that the, the special effects in this movie are outstanding, and um, this work over enhances the overall quality of the film. The CGI of Iron Man, the Iron Man suit, is outstanding. Now, going into this movie, one thing that you have to realize as a critic, I am not a fan of the comic book genre movie, but I can't say one thing bad about this movie. It's fantastic. The good news, folks out there, is that Robert Downey Jr. has said that he's willing to make 15 of these movies, and so far the box office receipts are going to guarantee that this is going to be the next big franchise. So huge bonanza for me. Huge bonanza, Russell. How about you? Well, Patrick, I thought that along with you it had impressive acting, the lead role for this was a brilliant choice, the plot line was extremely well thought out and it had exceptional special effects that was definitely shown through the fantastic technology that it showed. I thought that that was a great way to introduce this new state of the art Iron Man. For myself, it definitely lived up to the comic book character that we all know and love, Iron Man. But in the movie, it portrayed an arrogant playboy in the beginning, and then it started to transition into a pure-hearted hero, something that I really like to see. I like to see that growth in a character. However, in the ending of this movie, it definitely transi transitioned into his cocky attitude again. For me, I didn't really enjoy it. I thought that that really ruined the ending for me. But altogether, it was very well thought out, and I'm going to give this a bonanza as well. Was Nance's all around on this one, Iron Man. Absolutely. Definitely. I encourage you all to go out and watch this. Our second movie to review is Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Patrick, what was this movie about? Thank you, Russell. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. After his TV star girlfriend, Sarah Marshall, played by Kristen Bell, breaks his heart, Peter, played by Jason Siegel, best known for his role of Jason in Superbad, wants nothing more than to enjoy a vacation in Hawaii. One problem. Sarah's vacationing at the same resort he is, and even worse, she's bringing her new beau. This movie was produced by Judd Apatow, who brought us both Knocked Up and Superbad. Russell, what did you think of this movie? Well, Patrick, I thought that this movie was extremely awkward and even more perverted. Never in my life have I seen such scene work go into a movie on the big screens. 
to me, it almost came across as porn. So let us just pump the brakes on this for a second and explain why it's this way. At one point in the movie, I saw more of the main actor's business than I see birds flying around in the spring. It is ridiculous. <laughs> also with this movie, there are so many sex positions in there they haven't been reading the book Kusatra or whatever you call that sucker. I'll tell you what though, don't buy the book, buy the movie if you want that. For me, Patrick, I'm going to say that this was a bust among many. I could not, I, I would never buy this movie or would I ever watch it again unless I wanted the Kama Sutra or Kuma Satra. So Patrick, what did you think of this movie? Well, unbelievably to me, I, I've done some research on this film since seeing it, and I found out that actually some of the situations that occur to the characters in these movies actually happen to the writer in real life. And what I would have to say to that is sometimes private thoughts are okay. <laughs> forget about forgetting Sarah Marshall. I wish I could forget about some of the scenes in this movie. The naked truth about this movie is that although it was funny, it wasn't that funny. I found myself oftentimes in shock and going, what? <sighs> the bright spot of this movie for me, however, was the performance of Jonah Hill, who, is played, who played Seth in Superbad. He's delightfully creepy. Much like Russell over here. This movie will speak to some, especially if you like Knocked Up and Super Bad. I bet you'll like this one too. I like neither. So for me, it's a bust. Patrick, one of my favorite parts of this movie was as we were sitting in there and the first scene where we saw his a doo doo was when one of the ladies in the audience said, Oh, Lady Jesus! That to me was probably the funniest part of the entire movie. I must have uh, been out on that one. <laughs> probably blacked out. This was a very, <laughs> very different movie, let me put it that way.